Right, today we're looking at CAN bus. Uh, it's not new, it's been out for a long time, but it still gives some technicians issues when it comes to what the expected value should be on a good system versus one that has an issue on it. So today I want to show you how to check the resistance, how to check the voltage, how to isolate if one resistor is down, get an idea of which end of the, the CAN line it's on, and what the expected problems might be if you have a voltage that isn't correct. Uh, we're doing it on a Renault Midlum, so that shares the same system as Volvo and as Dennis Eagle. So if you're used to working on those types of vehicles, you will recognise the components that I'm working on. So without further ado, let's go on. So CAN bus, or Controller Area Network, is a, a two-wire communication system. And it's a way of allowing uh, multiple ECUs to communicate, send information such as sensor inputs or outputs over these two wires and it basically cuts down the need for individual wires for each sensor or output solenoid from each module. Now the way that they do this is they essentially transmit voltage pulses down onto each line. So the module itself will send a voltage down onto the backbone which is your two main wires and that message or that uh, voltage pulse is then picked up with every other module that's physically on the network. Now at the end of each network you have 120 ohm resistors. So in our case we've got one that's in the bottom of the engine ECM and we've got another one which is at the bottom of the diagnostic or at the side of the diagnostic connector. These resistors are to stop the voltage pulses which go along the line bouncing back off the line. So they would end up corrupting the message. So they're there to absorb the voltage pulses at the end. So if you have a resistor down, it can cause message or faults with messages. What we're going to do is we've got the two main wires you can see. That's the backbone, as they call it. That's the main uh, CAN backbone where all the information is passed along. And the modules themselves are connected to that backbone via two wires. One is CAN high, one's CAN low. Now we are going to check the resistance of the, the main backbone because we've got two resistors of 120 ohms and a very simple calculation is take the size of the resistors and divide it by how many there is. So we should have 60 ohms, 120 divided by 2 gives us a 60. And if we go to any module we should see that 60 ohms resistance at each module that proves that it is connected to the main backbone. So today we're going to do some voltage checks and resistance checks and I'll explain where the voltage are as we um, get onto the test themselves onto the vehicle. So without further ado let's uh, progress and let's have a wee look at what we're going to do. Right so the first place that we're going to start is we're going to do a resistance check and the ideal place to do that is at the OBD plug or D connector as some manufacturers call it. In this plug you've got your CAN high and your CAN no, low for your 1939. And the way that the plug works, so if you look at the top there, or bottom left as we have it, that's pin number one. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Pin six is CAN high on the J1939. So that's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So pin six and pin 14, CAN high and CAN low. If you put a multimeter onto resistance with the ignition off, the ignition must be off when we do this test. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's your CAN high and your CAN low. If you've got a good network with the ignition off, you should have a resistance reading of 60 ohms. Now it's going to be roughly 60 ohms because you need to take into account the wiring and the harness. So 60, 61 or 59 is roughly around what you're expecting to see, but it should be around about the 60 ohm mark. Now that's assuming that the two resistors in the harness are okay. If we've lost the resistor, if we're one down, it will sit at 120 ohms. So we've already discussed that one of the resistors is in the engine control module. The other resistor is physically in this particular vehicle, which is a Renault Midlum, 
is in here actually at the OBD plug and you can just see it, this black connector here. That is physically a 120 ohm resistor. Now remember what we're looking at here is we might have a resistor fault, we can have a broken wire in the loom which is not allowing us to see the resistor or we can have a module that's faulty where the soldiers at the back of the board have come off and the, the resistor physically can't be connected to the circuit. But this one here can be easily removed if you get a set along those pliers you take the resistor out, there it's there. That is the physical resistor at the OBD plug. And we can confirm that if we take our multimeter on resistance and place it across the two terminals. Here. That allows us to see that that resistor is actually okay. There you go, 120. Roughly 120 ohms. So that is a good resistor, a good known resistor that we have. If we go back in to the OBD plug at the moment, we'll find that the circuit, one, two, three, four, five, six, is now reading 120 because essentially we have now only got one 120 ohm resistor in the circuit. The other one, which is obviously in my hand, it's been taken out of the circuit. And that 120 ohm resistor that we're seeing here is the one that's in the engine control module. So what we're showing here, right, is the fact that the 120 ohm resistor that's on the Jai 1939 powertrain is inside this module. Now rather than take the two plugs off, which actually is not that easy because we've got a 10mm bolt here that holds everything together, if you follow the harness round, it comes up to this junction plug here, which is far easier and quicker to take off. Issues with these is the fact that you can get a lot of mud and debris around about here because it is in the engine compartment. You've got a, a yellow locking tab here which we need to remove but as you're removing it, if it doesn't want to go, don't force it because you will break it. So it's a case of push the tab right round and then we get to a point where we'll need to pull the plug off at the same time. There. Let's see that, that click and now the plug can physically be removed from the harness. If you look at what happens here, as I take off the plug on the ECM, look, we lose the resistor inside. So that's why it's showing 118 ohms. If I reconnect it, it drops back down to 60. So we've got the two 120 ohm resistors on the network. Right, so I've done a resistance check. Now what we're doing is we're doing a voltage check. The reason that we do that is to make sure neither the can high or the can low are either shorted to ground shorted together or shorted to high source. So of course to do that you need the ignition on, the multimeter you set it to DC voltage and remember it's a 5 volt circuit we're dealing with here. So can high should be roughly about 2.5 with the ignition on and can low should be roughly 2.4. So what you do is get your multimeter, we'll do this at the OBD plug, so take your red probe, put it on the terminal 6. Now remember Terminal 1 is always in exactly the same place. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Red probe in there. Black probe onto your ground. And there we have 2.5 volts. So that's shown us that it isn't, first of all, shorted to ground. And secondly, it isn't shorted to a high source, i.e. a 24 volt circuit. If we go into can low, which was pin 14, which is directly across from it. Do the same again, pick up an earth. We can see there we've got 2.4 volts. So again, that isn't shorted to ground, it's not shorted to a high source, but also it's not shorted to the can high because the two figures are different. And that's how you check the voltage on the can high circuit in the can. When we connect the scan tool, very quickly you can see that um, you've got communication areas, we've got many, many present and valid data. Uh, missing messages and the, a lot of the faults on it as well relate to one particular module so we've got accelerator missing, starter motor engaged, uh, not engaging which are all associated with uh, the vehicle ECU which is mid 144. So uh, here's the vehicle ECU um, you can identify it because it's got three plugs on it. It's got uh, a blue and two greens. The centre one's quite a small plug. And that module, is, this module is responsible for engaging the starter motor. It's also the accelerator inputs. It's got various other inputs to it as well. 
and it's normally coupled up with a bodybuilder module but in the middle of them it's just a vehicle you see by itself. Now this centre plug which I've disconnected here um, which comes out the middle here that centre plug is essentially where it's a comms plug it's got uh, your high speed can on it which is your green and your orange but it's also got a, a low speed can which is purely for diagnostics for programming the modules and that doesn't have any resistors on it that network so this is the plug that you would check to see if you have 60 ohms resistance across the green and the orange and that way you're determining whether that module is physically connected to the main backbone if you don't get 60 ohms there and essentially there could be a broken wire which means you're not that module cannot connect onto the network so you have to check 60 ohms at the modules themselves as well as the OBDs we did earlier on to make sure that the module is physically connected to the network Okay, so that was just a quick look at the basic checks that you can do for checking CAN bus faults. Remember, what we're going to be, make sure is we don't have any issues for the tops of the messages getting to those modules. Whether it be a broken wire, a missing resistor, high resistance, a short to higher, a short to low source. And remember, you must always check at the module as well. The main backbone might be okay, but you may have an issue where the module itself is not physically connected to that backbone. And remember, other communication errors can be caused by modules in the sense that they don't have a power, they don't have grounds, that they may have a software or a hardware issue. But today we've just been looking at Canvas itself. I hope it was helpful. Comments below. Thank you.